In this video, we are going to analyze pinch effect. So we will take one question based on this. And then after that, we'll solve the question. So question is, this question I have taken from uh, the book uh, Griffiths. Some of you might have heard it. This is a very famous textbook for first year students. I think it is uh, there in, uh, uh, it is a textbook for all universities, including IITs. So let us see now what is the question. So this is very well within J advanced levels and then definitely questions can come based on this. So question is, it may have occurred to you that since parallel current uh, currents attract, the current within a single wire should contract into a tiny concentrated stream along the axis. So let us see, suppose there is a wire and in this wire, current is flowing like this. Now, all of you have studied, if suppose there are two wires and if current is in same direction, then they apply a force of attraction on one another, right? So likewise, if you think of this wire to be made up of many, many thin, infinite thin uh, wires, then all of them should attract, right? So that is what it is written here. All wires should attract into a tiny concentrated stream along the axis. But now the question is that yet in practice, the current typically distributes itself quite uniformly over the wire. How do you account for this? So we are going to um, analyze this effect. And in this, it is given, you can take positive charge density as rho plus, negative charge density as rho minus, move at a speed V, and then we have to, so this rho minus is equal to rho plus plus gamma square, where gamma is this quantity. And now another question is, if wire as a whole is neutral, where is the compensating charge located, right? So this bracket thing we'll figure out later. Now, so let us see how do we analyze. Here, suppose this is a cylinder and the cylinder current I is flowing. Now, due to the moment of current is due to the moment of negative charges and then current per unit area, current density, you know, and EVD, VD is the drift velocity. Now here I've written all the magnitudes. So from this, we can calculate magnetic field at our distance, right? So magnetic field at our distance will be mu naught JR by two. I have applied Ampere's law here. So mu naught JR by two is the magnetic field at our distance. So this color, this is my Ampere's law. Okay, so now in equilibrium, what's going to happen? So due to that, there is one current like this, another current like this, like we discussed previously, we can uh, think of this as infinite straight thin current carrying wires, all of them will attract. So when, when all of them start attracting, it's the electrons which is moving downward. So it is the electrons which starts attracting towards the center. So they start moving towards the center, right? So when they start moving towards the center, then naturally at center or in the central region, negative charge density should be more as compared to the positive charge density. So due to that, there will be here in, the, in this region, you will have some net charge. So if there is a net charge, then electric field will also develop. Now, what kind of electric field will develop? Radially outward. You know? So that electric field, sorry, radially inward, but the direction of electric field will be radial. And then finally, in equilibrium, electrons will stop moving in the radial direction. Uh, definitely they'll keep moving because there's a current, they'll keep moving along the axis. But in that direction, the equilibrium will be sustained when net Lorentz force on the charged particle is equal to zero, right? I think I, ho I hope all of you will agree you know, with this. So E plus V cross P is equal to zero. So that gives us E is equal to minus V cross P, fine. So this is one relation from V and B, right? So this is VD only, I've written here VD. Uh, v only, let me write here also as VD. So now I'm going to find out uh, electric field, then we will relate both to find out the relation between rho plus and rho minus. So for electric field, I've taken this Gaussian surface. So this is a cylindrical symmetry, this is for infinite wire. So E into two pi RL from here and here flux will be zero. And then E into two pi RL is equal to net charge, right? Rho plus minus rho minus into pi R square L divided by epsilon naught. So here electric field becomes R rho plus minus rho minus by two epsilon naught. You can see here, what do we expect that rho minus will be more than rho plus. So this quantity is negative. Electric field will be readily inward. Fine. You can use left-hand rule to find out 
that electric field, this electric field, this for this velocity and this magnetic field, electric field should be radially inward, then only it can apply force on the electron radially outward and force balance on electron will happen. Right. So we are now almost done. This is electric field. This is magnetic field and J value we already know. And what is the value of N into E? N into E, N is number of electrons per unit volume. E is charge on one electron. So this we can call it, we can call this as rho minus. Fine. So let us just equate everything till now whatever we have calculated. So this is electric field. And this is now equal to what? See, mu naught JR by two, right? So J here is any VD, any have written as minus rho E. So this becomes minus times, that is one minus here as well. So minus times mu naught NEVD square R divided by two, right? Now here any I'm writing as rho minus. So if you see this R and R cancels, this two and two cancels, you get mu naught epsilon naught and rho minus here, any I've written as rho minus and VD square in this minus. Now mu naught epsilon naught, you know already it's one upon C square. So rho plus becomes rho minus one minus Vd square by C square, right? So that is what exactly happens inside. Density, charge density positive and negative charge density, both are not equal. In fact, negative charge density is more than magnitude of negative, negative charge density is more as compared to positive charge density. But if you see this effect in normal current carrying wires is almost negligible since Vd is very small as compared to C. So rho plus is almost equal to rho minus. So that is why in the question it was given that yet current distributes uniformly because normally VD is very small. So rho plus is equal to rho minus. Fine. So next part of the question was that where is the remaining charge? Now, since the wire as a whole is neutral and at central, in central region, you have more negative charge then remaining positive. And then there will be, now if you think carefully, then there will be a certain part where all the electrons will come. And there will be a reason from here to here where you will have only positive charge, fine. So for VD equal to one centimeter, two centimeter per second, if you try to calculate, then that uh, distance, that thickness comes out to be the surface thickness only one or two molecular widths, width only, fine. So. Now that's it. That was my analysis. I think this is a very, very highly probable uh, comprehension for J advance because we have not used anything which is not there in J advance. And it is there in the textbook of first semester electrode and it is first semester electrodynamics course, right? So that is why this is highly probable. Do it once more. Here, plus and minus, I have plus and minus might have confused you why I have put minus here, right? So that I'm leaving uh, for you to do this. As, so when you do this again, uh, do it vectorially and very easily you will be able to figure out everything, fine? Okay, so that's it. Thank you for watching. Please like this video and please subscribe to this channel also. Thanks a lot.